Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Summit Racing Facebook Live. I'm Al Noe. This is my friend and coworker, Brian Nutter. Everybody. Today, we are joined by a very, very special guest. Ken, we can't thank you enough for joining us today. We are going to have a great hour of talking about cars, about your history, your business success, and then also the relationship that Summit Racing and Lingenfelder Performance have had that goes back many, many, many years, back Decades. to the original founder of uh, John Lingenfelder. So, Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I'm really glad to be here, guys. Um, uh, this sounds like a lot of fun. So let's get going. That's great. All right. Sounds good. We got a lot to go through. You got an incredible car collection and a lot to talk about. So uh, one thing before we get started, I want to tell our audience, if you like what you see today, like us on Facebook, share this with your friends, go to our YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter, however you want to follow us on social. We've got a way for you to do that. So please follow us. The same with Lingenfelder Performance Engineering and the Lingenfelder Collection. Two different things that Ken owns, very distinct in what they do. One sells and modifies high performance vehicles. The other one is Ken's collection that he has amassed over the years. So both fantastic places to visit though. So Ken, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the history of Lingenfelder performance. And uh, I'll, I'll cue this up a little bit with kind of the history with Summit. You know, we, we have known and, and done things with John for many, many, many years, back to the era of pro stock truck and even before then when he raced in stock eliminator, or super stock and comp and did all those interesting things. And personally, I had the privilege of working with John when I was a product manager for Excel, uh, Mallory and digital fuel injection. John did product development for us as a company and he developed the Super Am intake manifold a number of camshafts, air intakes, a ton of parts that back then were incredibly cutting edge because when fuel injection came about, a lot of people were just very worried that, oh my goodness, are we gonna be able to still modify vehicles, keep them legal, drive them, have performance vehicles, all that kind of stuff. And John was truly a pioneer in that space. And I, I dearly miss him. We ended up becoming friends through the business relationship. He was a great guy. And I know you were a customer of his for many years, you know, prior to, to John's passing when he still ran the business. So can you give us the history there and then tell us about where it's at today? Yeah, I got to tell you, John was an amazing guy. He was also an amazing engineer. And uh, absolutely, um, I mean, some of the things he did on the racetrack, some of the cars he drove, some of the, um, I mean, you know, look at the sledgehammer alone for crying out loud, you know over 254 50 miles an hour uh and and really one of it, it there's a video that went with that whole production when they went out on the track for the first time with it and got the uh got the uh speed and the interviewer asked john he said uh, so how, tell us about it. how was the ride you know and everything else and john said uh, well he said at about 225 miles an hour he said the car started to shake violently and the reporter looked at it and said, really? He said, yeah. He said, well, what'd you do? He said, I just drove through it. <laughs> and that's John, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, he just wasn't afraid of anything. And uh, I'll never fill his shoes, but uh, he left us a very, very strong brand. The companies are much larger now, and we do a lot more things than we did back in those days. We continue to do some racing, and uh, but uh, he's missed by everybody every day. So. Yeah, without a doubt. Well, well said, Ken. I, I, Brian and I have talked about a lot of those, those times and stories. And I, I remember the first time I met him, I had his book, How to Rebuild a Small Block Chevy. And so, you know, yeah. my boss says, hey, do you want to go to Lingenfelder's and meet John? You're going to be working with him on these projects. So I went there and Ken, I must have been like a babbling idiot. You know, I meet this guy yeah, who's a hero of mine. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I have your book, Small Block Chevy. And at one point he looks at me and goes, T take a breath. We got all day. <laughs> and he was so funny, but he was always so cordial and so gracious and just, just a wonderful guy. So yeah, I think he said that. Well, we, we definitely miss him. Uh, he was one of a kind and just, just a great guy. So, uh, so your current business with Lingenfelder, I know you've got a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of things going on. Um, but I also know that the, uh, the business is kind of, I don't want to say different, but it's just evolved over the years. So can you tell us about that? You now have the location in Wixom, Michigan, and just a lot of things in play. Yeah, it really has evolved. And, uh, you know, we do, we still stick pretty much almost exclusively to General Motors products. That's just where we are and what we're best at and, you know, what we continue to, uh, to thrive. Corvette is still our major product. It probably always will be. 
Um, I mean, I'm a Corvette enthusiast right to the core. Uh, I saw my first split window Corvette when I was 10 years old at a GM show and my dad had taken me to, he was a Fisher body uh, executive and, uh, we left the show and he says, I yacked the whole way back, uh, <laughs> at Corvette and yeah. I was already a car guy, but at the time I saw that car, it made me a Corvette guy for life. And, uh, so it, it really fits very well, but, uh, but we do have a lot of things going. We've got the Decatur shop. It's a full shop, including machine, uh, machine shop. And the same thing happens up in Wixom. And, uh, of course, we're close to a real population center, so we typically do cars and coffee at our facility every Saturday during the summer. Um, we're still building cars that people like to race, and we're very involved in the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Challenge, and we race that Optima um, every year. Uh, we've got a large percentage of the engines uh, in that whole group that we've built, and uh, so we're very supportive of that. and. Of course, we love drag racing. We always will love drag racing. We've got a thousand horsepower Camaro in the in the back there, a relatively new one with the, with a new transmission. To, it's a ZL1, and it clicks off low nines uh, one after the other, which is uh, just a blast. No, no. looks like a, a a sheep really until it gets on the track, and then it just hauls. So, but no. yeah, it, it, it's been an evolving thing, and it will continue to evolve. Um, and and that's part of the fun, right? I mean, yep, just, absolutely. Just yeah. Something new to get into. So, what, one of the things, hey, uh, Chris Young, shout out to you as well. That yes, uh, we, we talked to Ken earlier about you know the reopening of the museum, and you're hoping to get to see it in person at some point. Uh, they're raring to go up there as well, and as soon as things are freed up from COVID, they're going to be opening the doors up, and it is a treat. One of the things, and, and we'll you know reiterate at the at the end of the show, you know how to go find the website and go tour the cars. Uh, you know, virtually, but uh, it, it's pretty cool and really uh, wild mix of everything, really. Yeah, it's an amazing collection. Chris, if you want to know about uh, events, they're going to be open and when there will be things at the collection. The website is the com. So if you go to that, as things open up, we were talking before the show started about how we're all looking forward to things getting back to normal as soon as possible. Going to car shows, going to races, going to events. And uh, the website will be updated. It'll give you all that information that you need. So hopefully we'll see you there. We'll make a road trip up from Ohio. And That's right. Chris, uh, it'd be great to see you there. And Ken, I did also want to mention you do uh, charity events at your collection. And, and honestly, I've always admired that. I think it's great that you have that philanthropic side where you tie your, your love of your cars and your collection into a, a great charitable event. We'll show a couple of videos in a second. But would you talk about the, the charitable events that you do a little bit? Well, you know, it, it's interesting how it all developed because uh, my wife, Kristen, is a very big enthusiast as well. And, uh, you know, with the car collection, it was just kind of like my private collection. And, you know, we sat back and looked at it and decided, you know, we should really try to figure out something, some way to share this because uh, it made sense. And in conversations with her, she was involved with the Alzheimer's Association at the time. Um, we just decided that the mission for the collection was going to be charitable. Uh, a charitable uh, function, charity fundraisers. And so that's really what it is. We're not open to the public, but we do multiple events, um, everything from Ronald McDonald House to the American Cancer Society to the Pink Fund and a breast cancer event. We've done black tie events. Uh, we've done pizza and beer with car guys. And uh, I think in 2019, we did 60 events. Wow. wow. Sadly enough, I mean, in 2020, we did zero because of the COVID uh, uh, virus. But the bottom line is we're very anxious to get back at it. And uh, we've got some new things to show off. And um, they're, they're a lot of fun. But the, the way you get in to see the Lingenfelder collection is attend one of our charity events because it's just not open to the public day in and day out. Very good, guys. Good. That's excellent, Ken. Thank you. And by the way, uh, your wife, when I was up at the collection months ago, she's got fantastic taste in cars. I mean, she really <laughs> does. You know, I, I've been uh, seeing that, you know, through Facebook. You always can can uh, link with people and all that. And she's enjoying the C8 uh, from what I can see. So that's that's a great thing. Yeah, she's the racer in the family these days. I'm running here, running there and, uh, you know, in different parts of the country, but she's had at least one or two track days with her C8 already, and she's nice. chomping at the bit. We'll have her out at Spring Mountain here as soon as, as soon as we can, and uh, 
You're going to be doing that, right? I am doing that in the uh, uh, third week of March, Ken. So, uh, you know, I had my my ticket from buying the car and I hadn't cashed it in yet. And things are opening up out there, getting a little easier to travel before. If we have some work travel and things that'll happen, I my wife and I looked at it and we said, you know, let's let's go take advantage of that and do that. So I'm really looking forward to that. I understand that school is awesome. You are going to love it. That that track, the area is beautiful. Uh, so much fun. Rick Malone is the head instructor there. Get to know him. He's the nicest guy in the world, uh, but very very focused uh, on Corvette. And boy, can he drive that car around that track. So nice, awesome. That sounds great. Well, Ken, let's jump into a couple of videos. So we have a few videos that are kind of a highlight of the collection, and then we'll get in and talk about a number of the cars in the collection one by one. But Katie, if you could go ahead and uh, hit the video, and we'll show the audience some of that footage from the from inside the collection. Awesome. Well, Ken, that's those two videos are a great sampling of the cars, but we're going to get into them. Uh, we'll try to get through as many as we can. So the audience knows, you know, there's there's a lot in the collection and we won't be able to cover every single one of those cars today, although we'd love to. But we are going to start with uh, the one we just talked about in the trip to Spring Mountain. So the C8 Corvette, Ken, uh, I know you and your team have been hard at work. By the way, the spanner wrenches that you guys have available for changing the ride height on those cars, awesome. Beautiful pieces, hard black anodized. They come in a nice little pouch. I mean, they are just like everything you guys do, well-engineered, well-designed, really, really nice product. So tell us about the C8, Ken, and what you guys have going on for that. Yeah, well, thanks, Al. I, I mean, those those things we do and the, and the things we've got coming for C8 are pretty dramatic. What we're looking at right now is my personal car. Um, this is my C8. I'm a white with red guy. Can't help it. I mean, every one of them is white with red that I'm, <laughs> I'm driving. And um, this is at the M1 Concourse track in uh, at the end of Woodward Avenue in Detroit. Um, it, it's an amazing car in every way. Um, I think further down in the uh, pictures, we've got one of my ZR1 Corvette. Um, and I was worried as to whether or not I, I'm so enchanted with that car, whether or not this one was going to be as good. And I have to tell you, at all levels, um, it's a better car in so many ways. Uh, handling is great. Um, we found a lot of ways to squeak out a little bit of power here and a little bit of power there. You're probably aware of the fact that the engine management system is something that you really can't get into. And yes. the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, the car itself is all electronic. I mean, the, the old linkage with the transmissions and in the brakes. I mean, this thing is completely electronic with regard to uh, the components. So, um, but as always, we always find a way to get a little bit, squeeze a little bit more power out of it. And, uh, and then the exhaust as well. One thing I, I always, with every car maker, they never seem to make enough noise for me. <laughs> and uh, we, we uh, worked with Corsa to develop a, uh, a exhaust system for this car. We've got three levels. Of course, I have to have the maximum one, right? Because I need to make a lot of noise, I guess. But uh, 
but anyway, it, it's an amazing car. I I can't stop talking about it. And boy, you want to talk about attention? It gets on the road. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic platform, Ken. A great car. Um, and we do have that exhaust in stock at Summit Racing. So uh, back to the partnership and the relationship between the companies, any of those Lingenfelder performance engineering parts are available through Summit Racing. Um, you know, the car builds, we don't do that. You'll have to go to Lingenfelders for that. But if you want to do it yourself and you want to buy the exhaust or any of the other components, we're glad to help you with that. And, and Ken, I agree with you. The C8, it's, it's, uh, to me, it's an amazing car. I, I really have enjoyed mine thoroughly. Uh, tracked it quite a bit and it is it is just an outstanding car great platform i plan to do a lot more fun things with it but uh you know i know brian you and i were in it for some autocross and things and oh, uh, yeah. i had a good time with that so we're going to do a lot more of that this year and huge uh, huge, huge bang for the buck uh, you yeah know, i mean corvette has always been a bargain but this car for what you get and you saw in the collection some of the cars we've got um I, it, it's uh you can buy uh, three Corvettes for what you'd pay, four Corvettes for what you'd pay for some of those. So it's it's a huge, huge bank for the buck. It's, it's amazing. I, I've had a chance to meet with some of the engineers uh, in, in Michigan you know, that are behind the engine development. I do engine development here at Summit Racing, uh, parts development, and they are enthusiasts just like us. Uh, you know, and so they are also looking at ways to, you know, allow us to, you know, keep tinkering with the cars. Uh, like you said, bang for the buck, but there's a lot of potential as well. Lots of things that, you know, can be done with the car. Uh, I was amazed riding an Owl's car, you know, what a difference it was from my old C5Z, for instance, which is it's nose heavy, 53% on the front. And, you know, the way that it behaves in a corner versus his, which is just squats, goes, aim, shoot, uh, and the, the way it turns into a corner too. So it's going to be an exciting time to develop these cars over the next generation. You know, the C8 generation, 8.5, you know, whatever it becomes. Yep, absolutely. So, Ken, let's talk about the next one in the collection. And we're going to, for the viewers' uh, sake, we're going to go from the newer platforms back into some of the older cars. So if you're looking forward to seeing some of the really awesome muscle cars and things, just hang tight. We're going to get to them. But speaking of muscle cars, I don't know if there's much that's much more muscular than this one, Ken. This <laughs> car is a beast. <laughs> yep. You know, you're right. It is a beast. And what's really cool about it is uh, we put the stock uh, wheels, take the skinnies and the slicks off, and you can drive it around and use it as a grocery getter. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely an amazing car. It's a Z01 Camaro. Uh, we've got our 1,000 horsepower package on it. And this car rips down the drag strip like uh, you can't imagine. Uh, what's fun about it is, you know, the Copo Camaros are very fast as well. This, we're always clicking off low nines in it. And um, it was kind of funny because when we first showed up at the drag strip with it, um, you know, the guys knew, saw our name on the windshield and looked to make sure we had our oak cage in it. I'm glad we did. And uh, it just clicked, like I said, nine twos, nine threes, nine fours off all day. Right. Amazing car, a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, that that is incredibly fast. Ken, remember back in the day when a 12 second street car was really fast? <laughs> well, I sure do. Yeah. You know, and, and now you look at it and things that you all are building low nine second, drive it anywhere. You, and and you go, look at the interior in that car. I mean, it's all there. Yeah. It's not a lightweight. That, that car is a, uh, is a heavy car and that, that is impressive. That and is the, in the sixties rectangular, everybody recognizes that brake pedal too. And the long pedal on the right. You know, yeah. It's just, it really takes you back. I, I remember when the, uh, the fifth gen, uh, came out in 2010 and I went to the auto show. Uh, I owned a 67 RS. And so the Camaro has always been near and dear to my heart. And you've got old red, his 67 Camaro. I've had that. And uh, it was great when these cars came back and, and uh, they are tremendously capable uh, in good hands there with, you know, Stilo and the engineering team that helped create the six gen. Also, I want to just bring up, you know, you guys have always been leading edge, uh, you know, from the C4 Corvette days to the C5, C6, uh, seven, uh, you know, and it's one of these things that everybody's always a little bit apprehensive about the future and regulation and, and all that business. But, you know, we've been able to have our cake and eat it, too. And there's nothing to think that it's going to be any different. Um, we wrote a tremendous article here. Uh, the on all cylinders team did about the future of the C8 uh, hybridization, you know, basically, you know, everything that's going to come forward. Um, I love something very in particular about GM is basically how they reuse RPO codes and they're like little tiny 
uh, pieces of puzzles that you can imagine when they give something the name LS6 or LS7, uh, you know, that you're like, I wonder where they're going with this because there's a, a hierarchy there. Uh, you know, looking forward to the new C8 Z06 coming out, double overhead cam, supposed to be naturally aspirated track car beauty, uh, ZR1, Duntov, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be really cool what's coming up. Yeah, a lot of iterations coming up for sure. Ken, let's talk next about, speaking of iterations in different vehicles, mm -hmm. this one's always been interesting to me. So the Lingenfelder Colorado, um, really a cool piece. And this, this in a way to me is almost like a throwback. Remember the Sonoma that John and the team built way back in the day that was, oh, I, I think it was 427, it was a nine second street truck. <laughs> super, super cool. This reminds me of that, although it's a lot different purpose. You know, that one was a drag truck. This one is something you can drive everywhere off road and, and uh, tell, tell us about this and the package behind it, Ken. Well, you know, this is a cool truck in itself. I mean, once again, I think General Motors has done an amazing job putting this truck together and making it uh, available for us all. Um, but, you know, like anything else, and we always want some more power, right? And, uh, and we want to make it have it make a little bit more noise. Uh, we started uh, supercharging this uh, with the Edelbrock supercharger. Um, we actually were very interested also, though, to make sure we had a 50 state legal car uh, when it was all done, the truck sure. when it was all done. So this car actually um, has got that supercharger. We can make 450 horsepower, upwards of 500 horsepower uh, pretty easily with it. And um, we sell it as an install. We do a package and we'll do the install or you can buy it as a kit. But it takes that V6 engine, gives it just the push and power that it needs. And uh, of course, you know, everybody likes a little bit extra here and a little bit extra there. So this has got our graphics uh, set up on it. And uh, it's been a very, very successful product for us. Uh, and, you know, guys like off-road, so it's up. We've got a, got it lifted and some great wheels and tires on it. And um, I, we've done a whole bunch of them. We're going to continue to do a whole bunch of them. The Colorado uh, and the Canyon, uh, we can use uh, both those with the V6 engine. Excellent. Great to go head to head, you know, basically with the with the Ford there, Raptor. So that's that's good. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome truck. Ken, the next one on the list, one of my favorites. Actually, I'll say that about probably every car here, but the, the C7 ZR1. Yeah. What a fantastic car. And I know, Ken, you love this car. And like you were saying, when the C8 came out, you were you were kind of wondering, like, hmm, is it gonna be that good? So I know you've had a lot of experience with these cars. Tell us about this one. Well, I have to tell you, this this car, uh, this is, again, my personal driver. Um, I'm enchanted with it. It's got a manual transmission, and uh, I like that, too. That's the one thing you can't get on a C8, so I'm glad I did get uh, a manual transmission in this one. But we've really not done anything to tune this car. This is a stock um, ZR1. Uh, I, I've got a lot of cars to choose from. Obviously, I've put about 25,000 miles on this car already. Wow. So obviously, I'm uh, using the daylights out of it. But okay. it's also a car I can take anywhere. Um, I've taken it on trips. I've driven it to Chicago and uh, other big cities. And uh, it's it's an amazing car from top to bottom. Yeah, beautiful car. Great color combination, too, Ken. I agree with you. The white, the white and the red white. is striking. Very, very nice. Nice. Um, next one on the list is the 2010 Lingenfelder Trans Am. This car has an amazing body kit on it, Ken. Tell us about how you developed that and how, how did this come about? Well, you know, I like a lot of people. I, I've loved Pontiacs my whole life. And when General Motors uh, had to get rid of uh, a brand and Pontiac went away, uh, I was really a little disappointed that we weren't going to be getting any Trans Ams in to be able to tune and build. And uh, so I got our guys together and I said, look, I said, if we decided to do this on our own, just kind of come up with an idea. What would we have to do? And so everybody said, oh, got to have honeycomb wheels, got to have a shaker hood. You know, it's got to be the single headlight car. And, uh, you know, remember the blue vinyl interior. And so we got our heads together and uh, hired a designer to come in and put together something that really met, met what we were looking for, um, built the car and took it to SEMA. And I have to tell you, it just blew the roof off at SEMA. Um, everybody loved it. We found the original guy who, uh, original company that supplied the blue vinyl interior to the cars like this. So it has that same look to it all the way through. Wow. Um, the shaker hood 
you know, is uh, everything works. And uh, I think I heard every Firebird story that you can possibly hear <laughs> standing by this car at SEMA. Right. Um, we, we really hadn't intended it to be a production car. So I don't know. I think we built maybe 20 or so. I know we built a few for our customer in the Middle East. And, uh, and there have been other iterations of this car. You know, I think you other people have taken it to the next level. But I'll never sell this car. I mean, it, it was so much fun to build. It's fun every time we take it to a show. And as I said, a tremendously successful car at SEMO. Excellent. Yeah, that's a beautiful car, Ken. Great, great, uh, tasteful way to have a modern version of a really cool, iconic design. Very, very, much. very nicely done. Yeah, thank you. Um, next one on the list, the 2000 Blue Angels Corvette. This this is a really interesting story, Ken. Tell us about this car. It's uh, This is one of those that if I would have been a, a kid when this car came out, it would have been on my bedroom wall along with the Yanko Camaro ads and Nikki Chevrolet ads and all that kind of stuff. But th this car is pretty special. Tell us about this one. Yeah, it really is. Actually, the sign in the window, it spent a little bit of time at the uh, National Corvette Museum, and uh, that's where that came from. But uh, 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, twin turbo. Um, we were challenged at one point, uh, I think it came through Motor Trend TV, to uh, race the Blue Angels for a quarter mile. And, uh, and we smoked them on the quarter mile with it. It's uh, there's a video out there somewhere. I can't put my finger on it sometimes all the time, but uh, what an amazing uh, opportunity to, it was for us to show it off. Um, it was also fun for us because uh, the Blue Angels fly uh, at an air show, probably we have 30, 30 miles south of us here every other year. And um, so we invite the crew and the pilots up for a dinner at the collection when they're in town. And they've invited me down to the show. We get to watch the uh, the air show from their quarters, which is really a very wow. special thing, too. Nice. Uh, of course, the guys are all gearheads that are on their on their tech team and everything else. So imagine that uh, we do kind of politely show the video of us smoking them on the quarter mile when we're there at the, having dinner. <laughs> Just give a little reminder, huh, Cam? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So Excellent. They're, they're a great group of people, and. Uh, Boy, they're welcome. They're welcome at the collection anytime they want to come. But That's it's awesome. Car. That is incredible. What a cool story. Such neat history. The next car's got some really neat history too. Uh, 1998 uh, Drag Camaro. Ken, this was a Chevrolet factory project, wasn't it? You know, it was, and it uh, you know it showed up at a Barrett Jackson auction. I mean, there's a Hot Wheels car for this thing, and. Uh, it's got a passenger seat. My understanding is they would take uh, people down the drag strip uh, for a ride in it, but it's really good at lifting its uh, wheels up and hauling down the track. Uh, I was at the right place at the right time to buy it. They were selling off some cars from the Heritage Collection at uh, Barrett Jackson, and uh, I saw it and I had to have it. Um, didn't want to let the auctioneers know what I paid for it, but I would have paid a lot more than I ended up paying. <laughs> nice, nice. Hey, Scott Harrison, we see you out there. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. Hope you're doing well. This uh, this car, Brian, if I remember right, I thought I remember Kurt Urban, our friend Kurt Urban, wheeling this thing for one of the magazine tests, I think. I don't know, Ken, if you remember that history. Yeah, that's what I remember as well. Great guy, you know, one of the most innovative guys in, in you know, LS engine building. So, yeah, uh, currently Not working about. with, uh, well, anyway, he, I, I'm on his Facebook group and everything like that. And, you know, he's always showing, you know, new pictures of things, uh, the stuff he did out at Bonneville, of course, but, you know, very forward thinking, things outside the box. And you always see things out of the guy that, you know, it, you've just never even imagined. It's, it's really neat to see his work. Yeah, without a doubt. So the next car, this this next car, the Lingenfelder Firebird, this car is pretty near and dear to my heart. So when I first worked for Mr. Gasket, one of the first projects that I was involved in was this car and working with uh, John and his team to, do, to build the prototype. Now, when I say that, there were actually a lot of other people involved in it. I got to drive the thing on one leg of the hot rod power tour. Wow. And there's a whole nother story behind that, that that I won't get into now, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And a friend of mine worked for SLP at the time with the SLP Camaro. And uh, let's just say that the SLP Camaro wasn't as fast as the Lingenfelder Firebird was. And uh, I had a great time in that car. It was awesome. Now, the prototype, interestingly enough, was a 96. Whereas this is a little bit newer than that. This is an LS1 car. 
that was an LT1 car. So we kind of did this proof of concept with the paint, some of the Lingen Photo Performance parts. It still had the gold wheels. I know that car is still in existence, and I'm pretty sure I know who owns it, but that car was such a special piece of my history because I couldn't believe when my boss said, hey, do you want to do some of the power tour and do it in this car? I mean, I, I, yeah, of course. You is know? that a true question? Right, exactly. It was <laughs> it was outstanding. So, Ken, tell us about this one. This is an LS-based one, though, not an LT. It is. And, you know, you could actually walk into a Pontiac dealer and order this car, uh, which was something pretty special. Um, there weren't a whole bunch of them built. I was fortunate enough to find this one at, uh, locally here, actually, too. And uh, it's one of the prizes to the collection. If you look up at that picture on the wall, that's a, uh, a picture that was painted of uh, Linda Vaughn with, uh, I think it was her nephew that made that painting. No and, kidding. Uh, and Linda signed the uh, the back of it for me, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's a very special car. And uh, again, a permanent part of the Lingenfelder collection, that's for sure. Nice. Yeah, that that's awesome, Ken. And I do remember it's SEMA. When we showed that car at SEMA, the, the prototype, uh, Linda was there signing autographs. And just a shout out to her, that is one of the most amazing people that I've ever met with respect to remembering people and their names. I have never met somebody who is that incredibly good at it. She remembers everybody. It's amazing. And she is one of the nicest people. Um, well, you're right about that. I, you know, I, several years ago, we were at a uh, Hot Rod Power Tour event, and my uh, daughter, Noelle, was eight years old, and and she, uh, you know, had Noelle sit while she was signing posters with her and just kind of entertained her for a while. And, you know, I ran into, I'd run into Linda all the time, would ran into her to show, and she's, Ken, how's Noelle? You know, I just could no not way. believe that she still remembered her name so uh, yeah you're right she's an amazing person and i'm so glad we have her it's a uh, great part of the industry that's exactly yeah. right yeah absolutely so the next car ken is another one that another one of my favorites out of the 30 favorites i have the dontov mule car so zora arcus dontov the father of the corvette uh amazing amazing engineer tell us about this car this is like that car that started Corvette performance, just an awesome piece of history. Yeah, this car, a lot of people call it the first V8 Corvette. Uh, the engine was built by Smokey Yannick. Um, it's been, you know, when they had Corvettes back in the day like that, they had all kinds of purposes. It, it did 150 miles an hour in Daytona back in those days, which is really pretty incredible. Um, I don't want to drive it at 150 miles an hour, believe me. You'd have to really be... Uh, uh, pretty brave, but um, but it's got a very unique style to it. The wing out the back, uh, yeah, the back seat always gets a lot of attention. I found this car at a uh, uh, this, um, Mikkel auction. I walked in the door and it was sitting up on a turntable, and I mean I fell in love with it from the time I saw it. And I had a friend or two that worked at Mecham and asked them what the reserve was on it. It was like seven hundred k, and I thought, oh my gosh, there's no way I can afford that thing. And uh, so I was just kind of open a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. We sat down during the auction and uh, you know, it stopped kind of stopped bidding at a certain level and I made a bid and surprisingly enough, I ended up buying it. And uh, so it's been all, all over the country at different shows. It was at the Audrey Museum for a year uh, last year. And uh, it, it is one of the, um, one of the charms of the collection. It that was a speedster. Of, it's an amazing old um, collection. 50, 50 most significant cars Corvettes ever built. So I'm very proud to own it. And it gets a lot of attention here. That's for sure. It's amazing. I, do, I, I don't know if you guys do it yet, but if you guys do sound clips, you know, for any of these cars, when you light them off every once in a while, uh, that would be phenomenal to hear something, you know, of that vintage. And to do 150 would have been pretty amazing the power it would have had oh, to yeah. make to do that number well and think uh, when i'm looking at this picture of the interior look at the little brain bucket <laughs> yeah <laughs> right the, the right. helmet they had back then those guys had guts i mean to go 150 in that car it's pretty fast let alone with a tiny little i mean I, I'd, I'd love to know how thick that helmet is and is it really that good or you is know, it just like a leather look at the helmet? plexiglass i mean yeah. you, you and i are thinking about you know the plexiglass we've got in our you know uh, you know, dishwashers and everything like that. And imagine that thing, you know, being what's between you and the wind at 150 would be just awesome. I have yeah. driven it on a few TV things that we've done with it. And the noise it makes is really good. You're right, Brian. I mean, it sounds wonderful. 
Great. Yeah, fantastic great. car, Ken. Absolutely nice. awesome. So the next one that kind of falls in line with this, but it's a little bit newer, so we're jumping out of order a little bit. Ah. Super Performance Grand Sport. This this Beast car. On my heart. I remember when I saw this in your booth at SEMA, you know, years ago, and what a what a beautiful, beautiful car. And uh, the Grand Sport is one of my favorite renditions of Corvette ever. I mean, I think in that era, trying to put this together to go run against the Cobras and compete in all the SCCA competition, such an incredibly cool history with the Grand Sport. And tell, tell us about this one. This one's absolutely modernized with a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, it is. You know, there were really uh, five, some say six original Grand Sport Corvettes, and uh, they're, you know, million, million dollars, two million dollars. So completely unaffordable, I think. But, uh, you know, this is a, you know, a, a venture with uh, Superformance. I think you guys know Lance Stander. Um, Lance and I are very good friends. And, you know, we sat, kind of collaborated when this vehicle was uh, being contemplated. Um, we got one of the very first ones that was done one of the really cool things is you can pick whatever drivetrain you want. So, wow. you know, it could be a LT4 modern uh, Z06 engine, or we went old school with this one with a, you know, pretty cool small block uh, Chevy engine with uh, dual quads. Um, it's, boy, again, noise, Brian. You'd love the way this thing sounds. I'm sure. It's incredible. <laughs> That's it. you got to go visit. <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way. You know, this whole, you know, I've got a mask around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, we'll bring masks. We'll be fine. One so, of the other cool yeah. things is uh, we actually did a show with Jay Leno on two of the cars there. Lance and I were on, and uh, and Jay fell in love with it. He just thought it was the greatest. So, um, I love that steering wheel, too. Yeah. Very old school, you know, uh, sounds amazing, fun to drive. It, it checks off all the boxes, believe me. Yeah, super, awesome. super cool car. Well, what, is that Admiral Blue? I mean, what blue is that? You know, I think it is Admiral Blue, to be honest with you. That, that one pops. It's it's always yeah. been my favorite. That was a, well, I don't know if it was around before the C4, but the C4 Grand Sport was that Admiral Blue. And every time I mm -hmm. see it, I'm like, if I was ever to do a blue, that is going to be the blue for me. Yeah. Yep. Danny Pop will be proud to hear you say that. All he all he likes is blue cars. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Blue is good. Another guy like that blue runs too. a lot of Lingen Felcher Motors. That's true. Yeah, over Very there in the true. Optima Series. Absolutely. 800 horsepower monsters. Yeah. Danny, Danny. Incredible driver. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he is an amazing talent. Ken, I rode with him at a couple different times. And last year at UMI, I uh, rode in the Blue Rocket with him at their autocross. And he just got the ABS on it. And I said, How do the brakes work? And he goes, well, We're going to find out. <laughs> and and we did. And uh, yeah, that, that was fun. That is a couple rides with him that are memorable. That's absolutely one. Another one was in the, uh, the real McCoy, you know, his family's. Uh, 71 Corvette that's got an LS motor in it as well. And I uh, blew my hat off at the good guys autocross in Columbus. And it's funny because somewhere there's a video of it where the announcer, I think it was Chad Reynolds, our buddy Chad at Bank Shift. Sure. Chad's yeah. announcing and he goes, hey, and here goes Danny Pop sideways. And he's, he's sideways everywhere. I mean, that's the way he drives, but he's super fast. And then we're going sideways through a gate somewhere. And all of a sudden the wind just comes through the car and throws my hat off and the back window's out. So the hat goes shooting out the back window at about a hundred miles an hour. Nice. And Chad just starts cracking up laughing about it. And they had to unfortunately just pause for a minute, go grab my hat and, and let the thing continue. Cause you can't have a hat on on the course, you know, but that was, that was fun. So yeah, over the years, Danny's, Danny's good friend, great customer and uh, happy to be affiliated with him. So on to another Corvette. Ken, this is probably that car that started it all for you. 63 split window, iconic, beautiful, stunning car. Absolutely awesome. How long have you had this one? Yeah, this is the one, uh, probably about 15 years. Um, it's, it's a fuelie. Uh, it, it's got it all. Believe me, the knockoffs. Um, I, uh, again, the, the best look from this car is through the back window. Uh, I can still remember being 10 years old and walking up to the back of this car and looking through that back window. And of course, everything was NASA back then. All the, all the astronauts had Corvettes and all right. the kids had all the model rockets and everything else. And, uh, I mean, this Corvette is, uh, is absolutely stunning. And, uh, and I'm looking at the cars in the background. I mean, I know we only have so much time today to cover some of the highlights, but you know, even the cars in the background are just absolutely beautiful. 
Well, those, you know, first gen uh, Corvettes, uh, they weren't the best cars to drive, but uh, it was all those development years that uh, brought us like this split window Corvette. Here. Where we are, constant evolution. Exactly. Yeah. So now we're at the, uh, at the tail end of just that split window Corvette. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of an interest in a foreign make that you have, Ken, Ferraris. So the next car is the La Ferrari. This this car is stunning. I mean, just a you, you walk past it and you got to stop and look at all the angles of this car. It is to me this car is beautiful. I mean, just a stunning car to look at. Well, I, you know, I have to tell you when people are walking through the collection, I can't tell you the number of times people say, "What's your favorite collection?" The car car in the collection and. And a lot of times I point to that split window Corvette we just went to, but uh -huh. boy, I'll tell you, this this car is uh, is the ultimate. Uh, you had to be invited to buy these cars. Um, I got an invitation early on. I mean, my name's right on the steering wheel, and uh, mm. uh, it it's it's probably the most amazing Ferrari I think they've built to date. I mean, what's that thing like to drive? Uh, it's it's amazing. It truly is. It does have an electric component too early on. Uh, uh -huh. And so that it does have uh, it does have that part, but it's fast, it's fun, it 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 does it all, and yeah. uh, boy, it's always a big, big, big um, high, uh, hit at the collection. <clears throat> I like to take. I, I just love to bring little guys back, you know, when they're like five, six, seven, eight years old, and put them behind the wheel, let them sit in the car, and watching these kids light up is yeah, just, it's like a starship. Yeah. I remember watching Top Gear when it's this thing versus the 918 versus the P1, you know, um, th those guys and Chris Harris, of course, you know, taking all those cars out and putting them sideways. And it's just, uh, you know, definitely a very uh, a pinnacle time, you know, when all three of those manufacturers had something to go, you know, really head to head with each other. Yeah, incredible car. I've had a lot of Ferraris, uh, Enzo, F40, F50. Uh, uh, this is by far the, the best of all of them. Wow, nice. Amazing car, Ken. Beautiful. So on to another one that is another beautiful car, uh, the Lamborghini. <laughs> so, Ken, is this pronounced Reventon or Reventon, or how Reventon. do you pronounce it? Reventon. It's one of 20. They made 20 uh, Reventons. And uh, once again, you had to be invited to buy this car. I had a pretty close relationship with Lamborghini back when I got this. It's around 2007. And uh, <clears throat> was invited to buy this. Uh, basically, got a real nice tour of the facility. And uh, in Italy at the time they did it, uh, they made a big deal of the delivery of it. Off, off obviously, uh, made its debut at one of the concours uh, up here in Michigan. And um, that matte finish paint, along with the look of that car, it's very stealthy looking. And that's well, just another car. I just love to let. Uh, and for good reason. Uh, I remember uh, the story on, on those cars when they were coming up with the, the design ethos, if you want to call it that, of, you know, the engineers and the stylists, you know, going and actually watching uh, the stealth fighter, you know, basically do its thing and the angles have it. That particular car is one of my daughter's favorites uh, in Forza 4. She loves to race it. And there's something very special about that car, too. It's way, way, way light. It was way lighter uh, than any previous Lamborghini before that. Uh, you think about the Mercy and, and some of the others, and that one was extremely special when it came out. It's a special car. Um, again, uh, letting kids sit in it is really a lot of fun. They just look at this thing, and their eyes are open big, and it reminds me of when I, when I looked at that split-window Corvette back in the day. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful car, Ken. Uh, the next couple, we're going to do two of them in one shot here. So Greenwood Corvettes, you've got a 76 and an 81 Greenwood Corvette in your collection. So, you know, they they always caught my eye. There wasn't a whole bunch you could do with, uh, you know, the C3 Corvette from, a, um, I guess, a option to, on the outside of it. But these are two very rare cars. Uh, the one, the black one is one of the one of four turbo cars that they built um just happened to be at the right place at the right time to buy this one as well and uh won a really nice award out at amelia island a few years ago at the big concours out there uh, it, a lot of people look at it and say oh gosh that's awful you know it's ugly but i like to refer to it as so ugly it's cool 
Yeah. That's his 70s, 70 gets. It's it, like it the is. Dirk Diggler of cars. It's like Batmobile, too, you know? Well, <laughs> it's it's awesome. awesome. Uh, the kids, when they walk by, and, oh, there's a Batmobile. No, 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 that's a Greenwood Corvette. We've got a real interesting project right now. You know, they built a sport wagon. Um, I don't remember the, that or not, but it had kind of a shooting brake. Yeah. It, and uh, my friend Werner Meyer is re restoring uh, a sport wagon for me right now that I found in New York. Oh, cool. That should be done a little later this Can't year. Can't wait to see that. That's awesome, Ken. That, yeah, that sounds fantastic. And, uh, you know... This one is a restored car. It's one of 22 original um, Greenwoods that uh, that they built in the factory. So. I love the wheels, yeah. Yep, and you're right, Ken. That is, by today's standards, some people may say it's ugly, but it's cool. It is still super, super cool. I would ride that it, all day long. Absolutely, without <laughs> a doubt. No doubt. And the ones, the black one's got a turbo on it, so I'm sure there's things. Oh, we gosh, could, yeah. Letting the guys loose with that. Have thing. our way with that. So, uh, 71 Nova, Ken, that's the next one on the collection. This, this one, I think, have you had this car for quite a while? I have. Everybody wants to buy it. I mean, when they come through the collection, hey, when you're ready to get rid of that Nova, let me know. And uh, <laughs> I bought this at an auction as well. The gentleman who restored it was a uh, uh, Michigan State policeman. And, uh, oh. I again, it was late in the day. I knew he wasn't going to get what he wanted for it because a lot of the people had gone home. And so I, I bought it uh, pretty well. But um, the guy told me, he said, I've spent so much time on this car. He said, my wife told me I better not bring it home because uh, uh, I'm going to be out. <laughs> That's <laughs> beautiful. In the barn and he spent so much time restoring it. But Those cars fun. were fun to ride. And uh, I had a buddy of mine back in 97, 98 that had one with a 406 in it. And the way it transferred weight was just phenomenal. It was uh, definitely something. Yeah, nice, nice car. Isn't it amazing when, if you think back like 25 years ago, you know, what you could buy a Camaro for, let alone what you could buy a Nova for. Right. And now today, the money the Novas are bringing, they are bringing really, really good money. So uh, good, uh, good car to invest in, Ken. Nice piece too. Really nice car. Yeah. It's a special car. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next one on the list. This is another one that you know, when my wife and I started having children, I thought, you know, I got to build a wagon. And if I was ever going to build a wagon, this would be it. This is a really, really cool wagon, Ken. Was this, if I remember right, was this a power tour project? Well, you know, what happened is I, I uh, as a kid, I always wanted my dad to get a Vista Cruiser. He never would. Of course, that was in the 60s. This is a 72. And uh, when I got it, it was, uh, you know, basically a green car uh it, it's in great shape came out of california but i decided you know maybe we should think about a 442 wagon so we uh, got a hold of a hood from a 442 it's got bucket seats a four speed put an ls3 in it with a blower and uh we actually raced it at the ultimate streetcar challenge just for fun and nice it, although i have to tell you it's really quick it made it down the straightaway of that uh, road course very very fast but <laughs> It's what kind of suspension work have you done with that? I mean, I know that there's quite a bit available for those cars, but yeah, that's that's interesting. That's a ride tech suspension underneath there, Brian. It's an air air uh, leveling um, suspension. And, uh -huh. But I mean, we've had it's been to the SEMA show probably three times in different booths because people know I have it. And uh, last time, our official tire company is Continental, and uh, last the last SEMA show, this was in their display. So, right. Very I had you know, just talking about cars from 25 years ago, back in high school, like circa 1987, a friend of mine had the uh, the Pontiac version of that. And we made it our mission to try to get it sideways on country roads, on gravel. And, and it would plow into every corner they had in Nebraska. They had, you know, basically these gravel roads that, you know, it was a square grid every every mile, basically. So we were trying to hustle it through the corner and, and it was just pushing, pushing, pushing. And finally, like the third quarter, I'm like getting really aggressive with it. So you basically could spin the steering wheel with two fingers like that. I just threw it one way. The thing starts going really sideways. We're heading toward a ditch, spun it back the other way. And it took like, you know, maybe six or seven pendulum swings for the thing to come back. But again, cars like that, just great memories. Yeah. yeah. How much fun? We did a car crazy show at Barry McGuire back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember that show or not. And, oh, yeah. Barry got a big kick out of this and we ended the show with a big smoky burnout in our parking lot, you know, and then he and I just talking and uh, 
a ride in it. But uh, yeah. it was his favorite of the collection at the time. So. Yeah, that's that is that is uh, cool probably the coolest wagon I've ever seen, Ken. That is that is quite a. D piece. Does it have the green uh, tinted uh, windows at yes. the top? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. That's that's super cool. Yeah. What a neat piece. Well, Ken, now we're going to get into some of the cars in the collection. And somebody in the very beginning of the uh, one of our viewers said, "What about the Monza?" And we're going to talk about that and some other ones too. The first one is the '74 Gremlin, which when you mention cars that are they're so funky, they're cool. This falls right in there for me. Like I look at this car and I go, you know, I could throw a mullet wig on and drive this thing around and think I was in Wayne's world. And even though Wayne's world wasn't a Kremlin, it was, I think it was a pacer if I remember right. Yeah. This car is so cool though, because not only is it got a, it's a 401 car, if I remember right. Right. Yep. But it's also got the blue jean interior, which is crazy. And right. until I saw this in your collection, I had no idea these things even existed. Yeah. And, and I love muscle cars, and I'd like to think I know a little bit about them. But tell, tell us about this one, Ken. It, it is really unique. Yeah, it's it's got the Levi. They actually had a Levi interior option, and this one's got it. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, again, founded at an auction. Um, I was bidding on one that uh you know was a little plainer and everything else and got an opportunity to buy this car uh a little later on but one real interesting story about it is that uh i think you guys have seen the the uh, youtube influencer supercar blondie and yeah she spent a day at the collection not all that long ago and you know of all the cars in the collection she just fell in love with this car she had to sit in it we had to start it for her and everything else but um that blue jean interior really makes it I, I think I'd be a little afraid to just kind of try to uh, launch this thing based on the way it's set up and everything else. You might lose it pretty quickly if you weren't careful. The, the, the 401s were actually some of my favorite uh, engines. You know, it's it's weird because, you know, we're known for, you know, Chevy, Ford and, and whatever, but the 401s had a ton of potential from the factory, great cylinder heads, a few minor issues with oiling and such, but tremendously powerful engine, very compact as well for its size. And I'm looking at the front bumper on this car and it's like, they went to a junior engineer and just said, I need a bumper. And the guy just said, here's a bumper. And it's just <laughs> like, wow, that's a bumper. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to spend a lot of the stamping die, so make it quick, right. would you? <laughs> just need a bumper on it. Yeah, but cool. Uh, another one of those cars that's so ugly, it's cool. Absolutely, yeah. cool. without a doubt. Speaking of that, so this next one, and Ken, help me with the pronunciation of this. Is it Sevalista? No, it's Cavalista. Cavalista. All Cavalista. right. I I think there were fifty built. There. I think there are two left. There's a white one out there somewhere. Um, I I found this car. It was in pretty rough shape. Uh, it needed a full restoration, and I really had to kind of I don't know to think about restoring something like this. But it it's so much fun. I can't tell you the number of people that have come up to me during a one of our events and just kind of put their arm around me and walked up to this car with me and said, uh, Hey Ken, um, so like, what is this? And, uh, <laughs> you have a few too many brewskis, you know, and, uh, <laughs> when you bought it, but, uh, frankly, it, it Les Dunham is the guy who designed this. He was a famous designer out of California and, um, he built the Eldorados that they used in the movie Superfly and Shaft. Mm. And, uh, and so this really kind of fits, you know, the kind of styling he was after at the time. Now, is that like 85 Caprice based or what is it? You know, it's a Corvette. It's a C3 Corvette. Okay. That's I'm just looking at the headlights. I'm, it just takes me back to issues, uh, our episodes of, uh, I can't remember the show. All right. That, that's awesome. Yeah. That is, that is a cool piece, Ken. That is something. Let's, uh, let's jump over to the next one. This is one of the ones I really like. I have always had a soft spot in my heart for the, remember the old Decon Monzas, Ken, that were IMSA road race cars? And my dad, ironically, when I was a kid growing up, he had an Oldsmobile Starfire. And that poor car, unfortunately, it was named the Starfire. It ended up catching on fire and burning to the ground, but that's a whole other story. But these another cars time. and that body style, I loved it. I thought my dad had the coolest car in the world and, until it burnt to the ground. But until that point, it was a neat piece. And the, this Monza Mirage, this is, I don't think I've ever seen one in as nice a shape as this one's in. Most of the time, the, the body panels are delaminating and, you know, it's a, it's a long time. You think about this car and you go, yeah, it's 45 years old now, pretty close. And uh, 
you know, but this, this one's beautiful. Tell us about this one, how you found yeah. it. Well, thank you. It's, it's, uh, I always love the Mons. In fact, I, I was rubbing my nickels together to get a car or two and was able to manage to buy a spider back in the day. But I, I saw this uh, Mirage. They built a thousand of these cars back then. Uh, but you're right, Al. They, they didn't hold up well. Uh, a lot of them rusted away and they were gone. Having said that, um, I found one at a, at a concourse show and really tried to talk the guy into selling it to me because it's just one of those things, you know, you get it on your list and you just got to have it no matter what. And, uh, and he said, no, I'm not going to sell you mine. But he said, I'll tell you what, I'll, if I come across one, I'll let you know. And two weeks later, he gave me a holler and said, hey, there's one up on eBay right now. He said, you better go hit the buy it now because it won't last. And that's how I got it. And wow. hmm. I didn't spend a lot of money for it. It's in great shape, but uh, it was a pretty lucky find because just one of those things I had to have from back in the day. And I was finally able to check it off the list, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, Super cool car. The next one also is one of my favorites, the Opal GT. Uh, this is one that I don't, I don't know what it is about this car. It's like, it's like a Corvette that somebody smashed in all directions and kind of shrunk it. But I, I've always liked these cars. I just think they're really cool looking, you know? It, it, I, so again, buddy of mine in high school, uh, had one of the cars and then he did a custom tail on there, everything like that. But you know, the time when I saw the headlights kind of flip up, they just kind of like whoop, rotate and it was just phenomenal car. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Cause that's a manual thing inside the car. You know, you just kind no of kidding. Lever and those headlights go up, but I had, oh. I had one back as a teenager in 72. Okay. One, and they're very hard to find as well. They, you know, a lot of them kind of rusted away. They used to sell them through Buick dealers and uh, found this one. It had been Z-barred. Don't hear that name very often anymore. Right. And uh, it's in perfect shape and a real attention getter at the collection. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah. Super cool. Good curves. Ken, we'll run through some of the final cars just quickly because we're coming up on the hour. And I know, you're, I know your time's valuable and I really appreciate you joining us. Um, let's go to the 66 Tornado. And just quickly take a look at that. What a beautiful car. This car to me, Ken, is one of those iconic body styles that, you know, I know in Jay Leno's collection, he has one that's, you know, heavily modified. And But this this to me is just beautiful. I mean, I think the styling of this car, the interior, um, you've had this for a while, haven't you? Yeah. You know, my dad worked at the Fisher Body Plant where they built this car. And uh, that's why it's so important to me. It's a 66 and it's in perfect shape. Bought it in one of those magazines, Old Car Weekly. Remember those old newspapers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a favorite car of mine, and uh, this one is in great shape. Well, it's, it's nice. You know, some of these cars, uh, they, they were classics really from day one, and the owners knew it. Everybody that ever bought the cars afterward, you know, knew it. Uh, you know, so you can find the cars in, in pretty decent condition, but that's beautiful. Yeah. The next one is a 68 Camaro Resto Mod. Ken, this car is just stunning. All the body work on it, it's beautiful. How long have you had this one? Well, that was a car we built for SEMA. Uh, I've had it uh, probably about 10 years. I, I, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much, in fact, I won't say how much it took me to build this car. <laughs> uh, we built it for Eaton to put in their booth with the supercharger, so it's got a big blower under that hood. Um, it's a pretty amazing car. Uh, I'm really glad I have it, but boy, I went way, way too far with it. Um, <laughs> It's one of yeah. those things, well, we're doing it now. Should we do this? Should we do this? And, <laughs> yeah. and I want to say, you know, we, we've got a lot of people over here, uh, you know, that have been commenting on this video. And we want to say thank you for, you know, holding these cars, doing, you know, all the maintenance, bringing them back to life and, you know, keeping, you know, good care of them. You know, that's something that, you know, the rest, uh, you know, just a ton of people here, you know, get to uh, enjoy the cars. You know, thank you uh, for you know, keeping the cars for us. Yeah. It's a blast to share them, believe me. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I feel at home. I, a lot of people look at, you know, me sometimes and wonder, uh, especially non-car guy people, uh, kind of think I need psychiatric help. But when I'm talking with guys like yourself and the people that are probably tuning in on this, uh, it makes me feel normal, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Just think of it as a therapy session for all of us, you know. <laughs> we, we probably right. all got to get our head examined at some point for doing this stuff that we do, but we all love it. And, uh, it's great the people that you meet and the friendships that you make and you know it, it's just it never ceases to amaze me what a small world it is when you start getting into people in the car hobby and who knows who and what connections they've made and you know you and i talked about that oh yeah yeah i mean it's just always incredible so a couple more we got to get through just because they're a couple again of my favorites 69 z28 
gorgeous, beautiful car. And then a 71 Z28 right behind it, which these two can. I love, I'm a Camaro nut. I love the first gen cars. Brian earlier gave a shout out to Mark Stilo. That's a guy who's built, I don't know how many first gen Camaros, but they're always incredible. And those bot, that body style and the second gen to me as well. Beautiful cars. Absolutely awesome. That one is burnt orange. It was a one year color and uh, it's a 71 and it's a, it's a great looking car. Phenomenal. Yeah. Love that one. And then the 73 Grand Am, um, you know, this one can another car that seeing them in this type of condition, you just don't find them like this. Uh, how'd you find this one or how long have you had it? You know, again, it was in one of those old car weeklies. I've had this car probably 20 some years and wow. uh, it's a four speed, uh, you know, maroon leather oh, interior. Cool. It's, it's got it all. And, uh, I don't think I could ever be separated from it. Believe me. It's uh big attention to the colonnade roof line. Um, mm. They were beautiful. Yeah, great looking car. And then we have a Corvair, which, you know, the Ralph Nader special, but this one's, wait a minute, that's not the Corvair. Yeah, Somehow actually, we jump that. Actually, it's called a Corvair. Oh, um, it is. I'm sorry. This, this was, this is a GM uh, Motorama car. Okay. Uh, that we had reproduced. It's, uh, there were two of them. This is a Seafoam green car, uh, V8 engine, um, fastback, uh, it was, it's been a year at the Audrea Museum. We just had it finished about a year and a half ago. It's going to spend some time at the Gilmore Museum next. But, oh, uh, wow. But they actually did call it a Corvair. Wow. No beautiful. Beautiful. So this is the Corvair that Ralph Nader didn't hate. So, you know, <laughs> the one that got by him. Solid axle on this one. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. What a cool car, Ken. I, and I love that we're still learning stuff as car guys. Yeah, I you know. know. Even know. after I being in this Corvair, industry like, for Wait a minute, all this time. And the last one on the list, the Olds 442. Ken, tell us about this car. So this is about as close to my first car as I could get. I had a, a Fawn Beige Olds 442. This one's got a vinyl top. Mine didn't. But, uh, you know, you have those cars that kind of get away from me. I wish I would have had the insight to know that it might have been good to keep that car. But uh, 442 is where it all started for me. And, uh, and this one is as close as I could get to it. But uh, 67 was the exact year. And... Uh, um, every time I look at it, I can think back in the day when I rub my nickels together to come up with the dough to buy it. So nice. Yep. Beautiful car. A friend of mine back in the day, a friend of mine in high school, his dad used to let us out loose in his 67 442. And, uh, if he's watching Rob Hill, I don't know if you're out there, but Rob and Mike Hill were brothers. They had a 70 cutlass and then the dad's 442. And that car was awesome. We had so much fun in that car. Just a great, neat car. And it's funny for how big they are. They're not that heavy. They're actually lighter than you would think. Huh. They're, they're really impressive cars, but super cool. Well, Ken, I, I want to thank, thank you so much for joining us and showing us your amazing car collection. And I also just want to say we appreciate the business relationship and the friendship. And, uh, you know, I think you're just an amazing American success story. And I think in a time when we're all looking forward to getting back to shows and events and all these things, it's great to just have car talk with somebody like yourself, who is such an amazing car enthusiast, amazing businessman, amazing philanthropist. And we, Brian and I can't thank you enough for joining us yeah, today. Thank you, Ken. Well, thanks. You know, Summit Racing has been, you know, our, our priority forever. You guys are a great company. We've really enjoyed our relationship over the years. And this was a lot of fun. So thank you. Thanks for including me. All right. Thank you very much. And folks out in the audience, thank you for joining us today. You guys are, you know, why we're here. You know, thank you very much for this and uh, looking forward to 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Ken. All the best, guys.